All right, hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this March 18th, 2020 morning. About 10.16 a.m. my time, and just over a few hours ago, Salt Lake City, Utah, had an earthquake. A 5.7 magnitude earthquake struck the greater Salt Lake City area, um, causing a little bit of damage and uh, freaking people out. Because most of the time, when you think of... Uh, Earthquakes, you would think somewhere like California, but uh, Utah sits in that Intermountain West region, the Great Basin area, uh, where there's definitely a bunch of fault systems and a very geological uh, active past there when it comes to building up those mountains. Um, you know, with many, many fault systems out there. Go ahead and check out a, a different map here if I can. <clears throat> Still got a <clears throat> little bit of a cold. Something going on here, folks. I don't think I have the coronavirus, but it <clears throat> is affecting my voice. So bear with me a little bit. I'll try to keep it short and to the point. Just wanted to show everyone what a 5.7 looks like on the uh, Yellowstone overview here. Even, the salt, even though Salt Lake City sits a little um, away from the area, just want to show you how powerful that 5.7 showed up on the Yellowstone seismograph stations here. A very significant earthquake signature there. If I happen to see this, let's see if I pulled up the Yellowstone uh, thumbnails here without knowing there was an earthquake in the uh, Salt Lake City region, a large one, uh, then I would assume this is a localized earthquake just with the uh, distinct marks that this uh, 5.7 created here on the map. Pretty interesting and uh, kind of cool to look at. Um, Let's see what I did with my other one here real quick. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to uh, the earthquake activity out there in the Salt Lake City region, folks. Um, a lot of complex fault systems out there. Um, and they don't happen like clockwork like they do out here in California or uh, you know, pretty much any other seismic active zone um, more complex, but there's a, a long history of uh, seeing earthquakes take place out there in the Intermountain West region. So just bear with me a second here folks. I had one thing set up and that looks like it's going to disappear on me. So I wanted to pull up the earthquake USGS earthquake map here real quick. See if I can get that thing pulled up. That'll work. I'm just going to shrink that back down a little bit. This kind of gives you a little bit better overview of the region here. And um, they've had quite a bit of earthquake aftershock activity as well, which of course is not unheard of in, uh, in a good sized shaker like that in the Intermountain West region. Like I say, this is pretty much just right in the vicinity of a major, major city there, such as Salt Lake City. Quite a few folks filling it. We'll get to that here in just a second. Um, you guys can see the cluster of aftershocks that have taken place. Largest aftershock that I'm seeing is a 4.4. Excuse me. Uh, that struck. Uh, oh shoot! Let's see here. Looks like maybe about an hour after the main shaker of a 5.7. Now this is pretty much all confined within a small area. It is not spread out in a wide area. Um, let's see if I can find that 5.7. It's going to be this earthquake right here in the blue circle. Surrounded by many aftershocks there. Uh, this All this activity is taking place roughly about... Man, it's pretty much well within the area of... Uh, Well, maybe just outside of the city limits there. You got these little sub um, towns outside of Salt Lake City, but no more than four to five miles uh, away from like downtown area. Highly populated region in this area. And uh, the DigiFillet reports there and the Shake Map and Pager um, all within the yellow. Shake Map up there a little bit higher. I do want to show you guys the 
Did you fill it reports here? Um, which is pretty interesting. Well, not that one. Let's see what happened to it. I think this cold's kind of just affecting my uh, my brain a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, quite a few folks filling it out there. Um, all showing that it uh, uh, did some pretty good shaking, not severe just kind of light to moderate shaking out there I did see some reports of uh, uh, some power outages and whatnot that this thing caused earlier not for sure if they got that uh, back on or not but uh, definitely pretty interesting there 5.7 uh, this activity took place on a fault system here man I am just not up with it today let's come back in here and check out which fault systems this took place on a lot of folks have heard of heard of the West Was Wasatch fault zone hopefully I pronounced that correctly um, that sits just to the east of Salt Lake City now that earthquake fault system or the fault zone there can uh, and is capable of producing a 7.0 or greater quake it's been a uh, it's been a while since they've had that big of a quake in the region and it does not happen like clockwork uh, I did a little research on it I'll show that little uh, Utah geological survey article here in just a little bit um, but uh, there's a little bit closer fault system that this earthquake activity is taking place on or at least Closer than the than the Was Was Wasatch. Come on, I can't pronounce that. Wasatch, Wasatch. One of the two. There's a West Valley Fault Zone, a Granger Fault System out here that this earthquake activity is pretty close to, within about half a mile or so, just to the northwest of that tip area of the fault. And the West Valley Fault System is a pretty active fault system as well. Less heard of than the than the uh, Wasatch Fault System. Let's see if I can bring that up and show you guys a little bit about it. It's, a, uh, it's an interesting fault system as well. But there's going to be fault systems out there um, in the Intermountain West. I mean, there's pretty much fault systems anywhere in the world. But, uh, gosh darn it, hold on a second here. Okay. That's probably a little too small, so we're going to go ahead and blow this up just a tad bit if I can. So it can be readable. Uh, this here is a little article or investigation, I guess, of the uh, West Valley Fault. Like I say, it's a little less known fault system than uh, the Was Wasatch Fault System. Um, the article here states a little bit. I won't read it all. I'll just read a little bit here. The West Valley Fault Zone is a lesser known of the two major faults that run through Salt Lake uh, Valley. The other is the Salt Lake City segment of the Was Wasatch Fault Zone. Salt Lake City segment has been well studied, but much less known about the West Valley Fault Zone. The West Valley Fault Zone consists of two subparallel main traces known as the uh, Granger Fault. Uh, the Western Trace and the Taylorsville Fault System uh, Eastern Trace. Let's see here. Let me get back into where they're talking about the... This goes into the specific details of it. Uh, let's see here. Well, that maybe that's not the right article. Gosh darn it. Um, yeah, we'll go back over to this other one. I'm going to have to look into that here in a tad bit. Um, this is the other article I was talking about. This one goes into more detail about the magnitude and whatnot capable um, earthquake uh, energy out there in the Wasatch, Wasatch Fault Zone and a couple pictures to go along with it I 
there's a lot of articles too scenario scenarios if you will if a big one were to strike out there in the utah region salt lake city utah region um, they're estimating if a 7.0 earthquake well first off scientists are claiming that utah's wasatch front faces a one in seven chance of being hit by a magnitude 7.0 uh the size of the it's a pretty big quake folks 7.0 is a much bigger quake than the 5.7 that struck this morning um there's, they did a little scenario in the middle of the night in winter when people are sleeping that it could kill upwards of 3,000 3, people injure 42,000 and damage more than a third of the buildings all buildings and cause at least 35 billion in economic loss um so that's kind of like a worst case scenario uh but the odds have been put at oh the odds right now are somewhere between 1 and 10 uh, over the next oh, 50 years or so. 1 in 7 odds is basically what they're saying. Uh, it's been about 1,300 years uh, plus or minus 650, according to these folks, since the Salt Lake City segment, the Wasatch Fault, had an earthquake of that magnitude 7.0 so we'll see uh, <clears throat> it's possible folks to see a bigger one out there not saying it is but when you see uh, some major movement out there in the region it's best to be prepared uh, it's very complex <laughs> a lot of information out there folks on this uh, part of the world and their earthquake activity not gonna I don't want to read too much of that stuff let you guys read it if it's big enough uh, let's see here I'll include these links here in the video description there's just so much way too much to read there and way too much to look at and uh, my voice is starting to crack and I really don't want <clears throat> to stop mid video um, here's a little bit of an overview, underview, of the Wasatch Fault Zone, Salt Lake City area as well. Not, uh, not the best picture I could find, but uh, uh, it does kind of give an overview of the fault system and the fault structure out there. If I shrink it down a little bit, it clear up. Eh. Kind of gives you a. Uh, detailed view I guess like I said very complex fault system out there in the Intermountain West region and uh, just something to for the folks to think about earthquakes can happen pretty much anywhere it's it's pretty much amazing that uh, you know to be woken up by a 5.7 out of the blue out there there was no prior after or prior earthquakes no uh, nothing within the past uh, well, I don't know I only looked back a week or so I didn't see any type of uh, you know precursor any type of smaller earthquakes at all this sits well south of the Yellowstone region not associated with it at all um, so I don't want I want to put that to rest uh, Intermountain West like I said this mountain ranges right there's mountain ranges all throughout Nevada Utah Idaho those are all fault clusters and fault systems that create those uh, um, the rising of the land out there a lot of pressure built up over many many <laughs> hundreds of millions of years and um, yeah so that's uh, all Intermountain West seismic activity out there uh, the 5.7 struck at let's see about 11 kilometers below the surface so that's kind of a good thing that it wasn't much much shallower um, looking at some of the aftershock activity shows me that the activity is getting much shallower than the original main quake so a lot of uh, interesting activity going on down there I'll have to keep an eye on that and I probably will fire up a data station here on the live seismograph stations that way I can uh, <clears throat> that way we can keep an eye on it 
on the activity because I'm sure this is going to continue for a little bit here. Um, if not, you know, there's always a, a good chance of seeing something bigger in any earthquake region uh, when, when an earthquake strikes. So percentages of a larger earthquake in this area tend to go down after a certain amount of time. But uh, I would definitely be watching the next 12 hours or so for any further uh, larger scale movement, <clears throat> especially in an area that's capable of it, such as a wasp was was touch <laughs> zone here. Oh my gosh, <clears throat> I need some caffeine and uh, some cold medicine, I think. Uh, anyway, um, I only probably covered about a quarter of what I wanted to say. Um, just not getting it together. If something happens, folks, I'll definitely uh, provide an update video out here. A little bit of earthquake activity out there in Alaska as well, five pointer striking up there you can see that uh, pretty large circle indicating that magnitude quake and uh, could be an interesting day out here earthquake activity in the earthquake activity department I should say um, this earthquake activity here in the in the uh, Pacific out here a little bit older earthquake activity that should probably drop off pretty soon that might even be beyond the 12 hour window we're getting we're getting really close to it. 24 hour window I should say <laughs> all right folks I'm gonna jump off here and uh, I don't even know if I'll do an up I don't, I don't even know if I will upload this video but I did want to do an update video just real quick on this earthquake activity and uh, um, yeah we'll go from there anyway have a safe day folks stay safe and uh, stay away from that coronavirus if it's out there around you peace